Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium with me, Bring It On. Now before I do anything else, I'm going to head back to the bookstore before it closes for the night. And buy a couple books now that we're sitting on some extra cash. Because I don't want to waste time by just going to sleep early. I'd rather read or something until 2 a.m. if I can before I call it a night. So we'll go buy some books, and then I will return here, speak to a cell about the crab man. And actually, while I'm over here, I might speak to uh, Sea Lane. The ice just off the coast crackles, shifting. Okay, before everything closes up for the night, in 20 minutes, I'm gonna try and take care of a couple of things. Well, let's do the books first. I just don't want to accidentally run over time. Maybe we need to speak to Ceiling about the music. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hyundar somewhere. Alright, so this is the one that we found behind a check that uh, I think that our Inland Empire had warned us not to read. So I want to buy A Man from Hyundar and The Devil Woman. It is a bestseller for a reason. She nudges her glasses. Let's go and buy this one too. I want to buy the Hyom Dollar Man book. Oh yes, certainly. Another good sale. She rubs her hands together. Alright, so now we have a couple of books to read to kill time after we do everything else we're going to do tonight. Karaoke and look at that wall. Actually, let's go and look at these real fast. So the frontispiece of this old paperback features a muscle man in chains, kneeling before a salacious looking woman on a regal seat. A bonfire lies between the throne and the man, casting shadows on the wall, and the shadow of the vixen's headdress looks like a pair of demonic horns. And then a classic. On the front of frontispiece, an, an anatomically unrealistic muscle man is reaching into a mountain stream, yearning to touch his glimmering mirror image. His eyes are full of childlike wonder. On the blood-soaked snow right next to him lie two giant Zweihanders. Everything's still cool here, officer. Well, the street vendor assures you. Uh, hey, a quick question. Do you sell any tapes? Tapes? You mean like music tapes? No, music is out. Don't listen to music. I sell extremely cool sunglasses if you want to get your mojo going. He points at the shoddy box on the left. All right, so you have no idea whatsoever where I could find tapes. Tapes? Tapes are everywhere. They're worthless. Kids throw them in the trees. There's one in the bushes right behind this lorry. The notion sounds preposterous to you, to him. No one would ever throw a good pair of high quality plastic sunglasses in the bushes, mister. He nods at the empty lorry cabin behind his back. The hawthorn tree on Rue de Songe's lane. Bronze colored ribbons of magnetic tape are caught in its branches, fluttering in the breeze. A uh, good hawthorn. Pat the tree. Patting the tree reveals a small sticker which has almost been worn to oblivion. It reads, RCM Emergencies Desk, number 8102. Underneath a slogan, Mankind, be vigilant. You tree-hugging pansy. 
<laughs> the bronze ribbon twists around and within the branches in an intricately natural pattern. But there's something. What do I see? There's a twisted logic in this mess. You see the ends of the ribbon, the way it flows, how it twists and turns. It's all starting to make sense. It'll be easier to remove now. All right, disentangle the tape. With slow and deliberate motions, pulling, bending, and unraveling, you manage to extricate the magnetic tape from the branches. Yes, yeah, so I was willing to try that once at 42%. Uh, I have an extra skill point, so if I had failed that, I was going to put a point into interfacing and give it another, another try. So. It curls up into a mess inside your pocket. If only you could find a way to re-spool it so that you could hear what's on the tape. Maybe Roy from the pawn shop can help you with this. All right, uh, leave. All right, Rory, let's let's check this out. I only have 16 minutes before uh, I need to get back to his cell. I assume she goes away at 9 p.m. I haven't been across the water lock past nine, so I don't know how how much that side changes. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Uh, the boombox I bought. It should play this tape, right? Of course. It's in working order still, isn't it? Just pick your tape and set it spinning. It all starts with the tape. Hey, do you know how to fix this? Show him the bundle of magnetic tape. You mean re-spool it? Yeah, I do, but... He looks at the bronze-colored bundle in your hand. Uh, great. Could you do it, please? This is important. I need to be able to play this tape for someone. But I'm not some Mr. Fix-It. I'm a pawnbroker. If you want to pawn the tape, sure. Although it looks pretty... worthless. He slowly finishes his thought. Wait, but you tinker with film tapes all the time. Isn't that the same? No, it's different. Those film tapes actually mean something to me. But this is just a worthless bundle of old tape. Worthless? It's not ro worthless, Roy. This could be the next big thing for the local dance music scene. Huh? What do you mean? He silly taps his fingers on the counter. Do you know that old church down the coast? Yes. What about it? I met some young ravers near the place. They want to turn the church into a nightclub and play some weird neo-disco beats there. They call it Enotic Dance Music. I promise to help them with that. Is it any good? The music, I mean. No, that's the thing. You can't believe how unbelievably thin the beat is. There's nothing nothing to it. No bass. It just goes bzoot, bzoot, bzoot. But this tape could make it hardcore. Man, you're really invested in this. He looks at the bundle of tape in front of him. It shimmers under the shop's dazzling light show. Okay, I'll help you out. It's going to take a moment, though, so just sit back and relax. You take some time to look around the store. The play of visuals all around the pawn shop is mesmerizing. Suddenly, Roy turns back to you with a reel of tape in his hand and coughs. Well, thanks for the help. Proceed. Uh, take the repaired tape. Yeah, my pleasure. I'll do what I can for true passion projects. Just try not to use this tape for negative photon emissions. Take responsibility. Okay. You know, I'm gonna ask him for his uh pure holodon. Or pyre holodon? Holidon? I don't know. I could share your pyre holodon with me. Have you tried it before? I think I've tried it once and liked it. Here you go, man. He presents a large cap-shaped object on the palm of his hand. Very odd looking. Yes, darling. That's the coalition government ordained parolidon. Straight into your gut. Not so sure about this. Wait, why wouldn't I be sure? Because it's an anti-radiation drug and you're a cop. Not a post-apocalyptic scavenger. Now, am I actually taking it or just putting it in my pocket? Actually, I changed my mind. I don't need any 
Pyrholodon. I refuse to take the Pyrholodon for now. I respect your decision, officer. What else can I help you with? That's it. All right, I'm hoping Acel did not go to sleep. It's past nine o'clock now. Because she's not tied to the tape. I could have spoken to her about the crab man before I got the tape spooled. But it's past nine o'clock, so actually I have an idea first. Let's uh, let's look at this first. So the bronze color tape found in the branches of a hawthorn tree has been reconstructed into a usable reel of magnetic tape. It's pretty fragile and in an odd format, which doesn't fit into any portable tape players. Nevertheless, Egghead will be stoked. Right, well, while we're here, let's go ahead and take care of my conceptu conceptu. I'm going to conceptualize, 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 there we go, there we go, some stuff. I know what I'm saying. So let's slap that on. I don't know what it is about the word conceptualization. I have so much trouble saying. I assume for karaoke it's going to be drama. Right, I think... I have plenty of drama stuff. We'll, we'll figure it out. I assume before I get started I can recheck that. But first things first... We have a wall to look at. Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. Why am I looking at this wall? Yeah, why? It's a wall. An ordinary wall. Gosh darn it, I'm passing this check. I've invested a lot into this. Oh wait, I don't have any points. Oh, that's right, because I... I changed my thoughts up last time. Shoot. Well darn. One of these days, wall. One of these days. All right, before we do karaoke, I am going to go back to a cell. Hopefully she's still out and about. If she's not, then we'll just go do karaoke. Well, I'm sure Egghead is still in the tent. I can give him the tape at least. Oh, ceiling's still over there. Yeah, so maybe a cell is still out and about. Yeah, all these people are still out and about. The door is closed for today. Time to put the kids to sleep. Yeah, there she is. Perfect. shaggy haired girl kneels on the sea ice. She looks up as you approach. So you talk to my associates, right? Are you going to help us? With the church, I mean. I uh, can't say. Can I ask questions first? Shoot. A cold wind blows. She breathes on her hands for warmth. Yeah, the others told me you went inside the church. Uh, what did you see in there? Oh, that. You're not going to believe me. There's no point in me telling you. She's less prone to blurt it out, crab man, than the others. We'll see. Go ahead and tell me. Okay. I went in and I saw a woman next to one of those machines there. Noid calls it a mainframe. She nods. She was dressed like someone who's been raised by their grandmother. You know, strange old clothes. Had this absent expression, didn't say anything, just stood still. That sounds like Cindy the Skull. Cindy the Skull wears a, uh, like the old woman clothes. 
Uh, go on. And then, you know, right behind her, a man crawled down the wall. Upside down like a crab. Down the church wall. I think the woman didn't even know he was there. He was completely silent. He stopped right before he got to the floor. Then just hung there like that, looking at me. Right at me. I fucking turned around and walked out. End of story. What did this crab man look like? It was too dark. I couldn't tell exactly. She shakes her head. Come on. She obviously could. She already went into detail. Come on. Quit stalling on me. What did he look like? He looked like a banger, okay? He was all muscular and stuff. Had a mesh tank top. I know it sounds ridiculous, but that only made it scarier in a way. A crab and a banger. Yes, a banger. As in a mess gang member. I know what it sounds like, but that's what I saw. Yeah, you were wrong. I do believe you. Why? She raises a brow. Yeah, it seems too ludicrous for a lie. I guess so. Anyway, what else? As she hesitates. I'd like to know more about your associates. associates. My associates? <laughs> I haven't got much to say about them. She blows on her chilled fingers. Uh, what do you mean? You must know something about them. Of course I do. I just don't tell people about my friends and who they are and so on. I don't provide information on them. To the cops. Well, what about you? Tell me something about yourself. Me? I'm a silver bird. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Maybe I'll ask about all this. Maybe maybe I'll later... Maybe I'll ask later about all this. I cannot read. I don't know what makes you think it'll be any different later, but... Alright. Well, let's go talk to Egghead about the tape. The large-headed youth has closed his eyes, lost in the music. Sensing you, he opens them. Good morning! Yeah! Pump it up! Pump it up! Pump it up! He shouts, apparently unaware of the time of day. So the tape that I picked up, it did specifically say that I couldn't play it in my boombox. Otherwise, I would have tried that already. Uh, see, I found this reel of tape. Maybe you can use it to hard up Ike's jam. Give him the fixed Hawthorne tree tape. Yeah! Remix time! Tape goes here, into deck B. His voice booms through the church as he takes the tape and attaches it to the empty reel slot. They're not in the church yet, so... He clicks a switch. The tape starts spinning. A hand on his ear. He listens to the audio through his headphones and shouts. Wow! Did you get this from Arno himself? His face lights up with delight. A great excitement is bubbling to the surface within him. This is big. Uh, what do you mean? Listen, I'm just going to show it to you. Ready? Ready. He wipes his brow. Now if only we had the beat for the full assault, it would be unbelievably hyper. Intriguing. The way I see it, Van Eyck based his remix on some famous original piece, like a folk song, something local. Seems he found an initial part with the main melody. I think it's just happenstance, chaos in action, contingencies of our limited existence. That and Egghead's fantastic talent. He nods to his friend behind the turntables. No, this is definitely part of the same song. Something cut from it. It fits too well. Something mysterious is going on here. Maybe Arno van Eyck lives around here and just threw a part of his song away because he thought it was crap. Fits, it fits! Bring up the volume! 
He pops his fist in the air. What about the base? Do you have any ideas for that? Andre looks back at you. Yeah, I remember. You said it needs more base. You can't just leave it without a base track. Honestly, nothing springs to my mind right now. But I'll see if I can come up with a solution down the lane. Yo, the warrior! The warrior of dance music! Don't be too hard on yourself if you don't figure it out. I think the jam's already pretty ultra. But it could be hyper, hyper hardcore! Alright, so made some progress. Becoming a music sensation. Oh cool, this gives us plus one interfacing, which we've been struggling a little bit with lately. Now the question won't leave you. Why did the melody line from a broken and discarded tape fit perfectly into a song played by some speed freaks in a frozen tent? Can it be coincidence? Maybe it's the hand of the man machine himself in his attempt to craft a perfect song. Maybe Egghead is actually Arno Van Eyck in disguise. Eyck? Egg? Hmm. That's what I suspected when, uh, he had that one little rant where he says the uh, the K becomes the G the boy becomes the man or whatever I was like oh this is this is Van Eyck himself but maybe not either way we have some karaoke to go sing so let's uh let's go do that let's go put on a show a very sad show might be worth going to go speak to Cindy the Skull real fast. Because again, the person they described in the church sounded like Cindy the Skull. So maybe it's worth going to go talk to her real quick. Nope, nothing there. Alright, well. Worth a shot, I guess. Alright, karaoke time. We've had this objective for, what, three? Three days now? I'm gonna finally knock it out. A lot of, uh, a lot of music this episode. I guess, and last episode. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy. A little unsteady, suddenly. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. Yeah, so it is drama. Let's uh, make sure that we're ready for it. Slap that on. What else do we got? Not super keen on wearing that on stage, but you know what? If it sees us through this, then why not? All right, let's tear it up. The stage is you feed. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. I'm ready, Gart. Hit play. The air is thick with anticipation. Someone dims the lights as the music starts. Okay, here we go. I will. 
would often go there to the tiny church there the smallest church in San San though it once was larger how the real may rest there down through the mist there Toward the Seven Sisters Toward those pale cliffs there I would often stay there In that tiny yard there I have been so glad here Looking forward to the past here. But now, you are all alone. None of this matters. Now, none of this matters. At all. all right this is just what we just sung well that was beautiful a lazy applause fills the room you feel your head shake as a realness of your body returns to you Yeah, thank you, Ancient Reptilian Brain. There is silence now in the deep where the voice came from. It has receded, to return only in dreams and nightmares. This guy really carried you. He did. I'd like to dedicate this song to my partner, Kim, even though he's not here right now. Good, good. Are we ready? I want to unplug the microphone now. The cafeteria manager intervenes to cut the moment short. Last words? Thank you, Martin Ace. Well, beautiful. Well, let's pay for our room for the night. Ah, smallest church in Saint-Saëns, right? Now, the cafeteria manager is waiting for you to acknowledge that he recognized the song. Yeah, the church is actually my love. Uh, things are really bad with it. Cool. Now, what can I do for you? He really does sound like he thinks it's a little cool. About my bill for tonight. Got the 20 real? Yeah, 20 real for the night. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. Alright, yeah. Cross that bridge when I get to it. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. She sounds glad to see you. Well... Not for right now. How about you? Can we unlock this check again? I see you found yourself a little something from my wardrobe. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. What brings you here? He scans you. About this robe I'm wearing. You can keep it. I don't mind. I can appreciate beauty when I see it. Yeah, I took it to blend in. I'm undercover, you see. Blend in where? A carnival? He raises his brows. Bye-bye, yeah. gendarme. That wasn't very convincing. Alright, so what do we have to do next? I guess we can inspect the church. And the people are still out and about in the fishing village, so I could try and get the signatures as well. But I'm also interested in reading those books. And I could save that for 2am as well. So I think what we'll do in the next one is try to talk to some people around the fishing village. See if we can't get fake signatures for Everart. Try to pull a fast one on him. And uh, just go from there, I guess. We could also check out the church. I don't really want to go into the church without backup. I'd like to have Kim around just in case. 
And, uh, I don't know, we'll take it from there. Either way, I'm going to call it here. Dress like this on the street. And, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.